Hello and welcome to Louise Singleton Creations. In today's video, I'll be using my photo frame mould from Let's Resin to create a decorative magnetic photo board. One thing about casting photos in resin is that once it's in the resin, you're stuck with it. So the photo I will be using today will be just acting as a background and then because it's going to be magnetic I can add any photo I like and change it whenever I like just by using a magnet to keep it into position. If that idea has sparked your curiosity stay tuned and enjoy the video. Today I'm going to be using my picture frame mould from Let's Resin. It comes in a kit of two moulds. I've used the heart mould in another video, but today I'm using the rectangular mould on the right for the first time. I'm going to be using this lovely picture that I took many years ago in the Dominican Republic as a backdrop. So this is going to be in the picture frame mould and I'm going to be making my mould as a kind of magnetic photo or memo board. I also printed out this picture of me that was f um, taken on the same day with the same background and I thought it would be great attached with magnet to the background they went together so well I thought I would do that and so these were both printed and laminated before I started filming for the video. Okay then, let's get started. First of all, we need to mix up the resin. I'm using Let's Resin's resin and it's a one-to-one -one ratio and it's measured by volume. What I should have done before measuring out the resin was fill the mould with water to find out its volume so that I could get exactly the right amount of resin but I was being a little bit lazy and I ended up not having quite enough but I can tell you now that I, in the end altogether I used around 300 millilitres of resin. So after measuring equal amounts of part A and part B, I gave it a good slow stir for around two minutes until all the streakiness had gone and it was completely clear. So here is the mould from Let's Resin, nice and shiny and new because it's never been used. The top part is for the picture and the bottom part is to make the stand to mount the picture in. And here's the photograph all laminated. Do be sure when you laminate your photograph to leave a space around the edge when you trim it, otherwise the resin will seep in. I actually trimmed a little bit too close to the picture and it did leak in a little bit. You'll see that later on but it wasn't too bad so yeah when you laminate don't go too close to the picture when you trim it and you've just seen me add two magnets one in the mold and one at the back just to keep the magnet into position that where the magnet is is where I decided I wanted to be adding my photograph later on if you want to have lots of magnets in there of course you can do that Right then, it's time to add the resin. What I did was I put in just enough to cover the base of the mould and I moved it around with my stirring stick to make sure it was completely filled and there were no air pockets. Then I used my embossing heat gun just to gently remove any of the little air bubbles. So once I'd covered the base of the mould with the resin, it was actually almost full. So it was quite a deep layer and it was time to add the photograph. I bent the photograph a little bit, very carefully, and just kind of released it as it was going down. So you're not getting um, pockets of air trapped underneath. It's hard to explain how I did that, but yeah, kind of st bend it and start it from the middle and slowly straighten it out and then it just goes into the resin very gradually rather than just plonking it in and yeah, that's when you'll get the air pockets. And once it was in, I started pressing down and the resin from underneath started coming up over the top and I kept on doing that until till it was nearly covered. Next, I used my stirring stick to move the resin around just until it was all nice and even and level. 
and then I started filling up the bottom part which will be the stand for the picture and I realised before I'd finished pouring that I wasn't going to have enough and that was when I mixed up a little bit more just so that I could finish it off. It wasn't much more that I needed but yeah just a bit typical isn't it? <laughs> So once I'd mixed up that little bit more of the resin, it was time to just fill it up on the base and on the photograph because the photograph part didn't quite come up to the top. And yeah, I did want a little bit of extra resin on top of that photograph because I didn't feel like it had very much. But once I added that extra bit, it was ready to leave to cure. About six hours later it was ready to take out of the mould and I was really keen to have a look and see how it turned out. The base turned out really beautifully and I was happy with that and as always it was crystal clear because that's what you get with Let's Resin's resin. I do love it. It's really really good. And so yeah, the base turned out good but let's have a look at the picture. Right then, if you look at the top, you'll see where the picture is a little bit darker and there at the bottom look as well. And that's what I was talking about before. If you trim your laminate too close to the photograph, that's when you can have problems. It, the resin seeps through. So yeah, it actually, I think I got away with it. It wasn't too obvious, but there was another issue which I encountered and I wasn't expecting. Let me show you. What I hadn't realised, because I'd never used this mould before, but the slot is at an angle. And it's angled so that the larger piece of the base will be behind the photograph. It will be at the back. And I didn't want it at the back. I needed it at the front for what I had planned inside my head. <laughs> and so... If I put my photo in as it was, it would be leaning forward. But luckily, when you just take something out of the mould that's very thin like this, it's still bendy. For about a day, it will still be bendy. And so what I did was I put it in, and as you can see, it's leaning forward. But if you press on it, it curves. So what I did was I put a box on there, just anything that's heavy and vertical, and let that push the thing back. If that makes sense, I'll show you. So I looked around to see what I had handy and I had my box from my Let's Resin resin <laughs> and I put that on there and to keep it level I put something else under the box as well because obviously it was bigger than the actual base of the picture frame support thing. <laughs> oh, I can't find my words can I? Anyway, I propped the box up into position and let's look at it from the side. Here we go. And so even though the box is only just touching it at the bottom, it's still pushing it back enough to make sure it stands straight. And there was a little bit of a curve at the bottom. And if you leave it like that until the next day, as the resin stiffens, it will stay like that. Right, whilst that was put to a side and fully curing, I decided to make a magnet for attaching my photograph to the background. And I've got a seashell here, and all I'm doing is adding a little bit of UV resin, just, just enough so that there's a space, the height of the magnet still in the shell. And then I cured that first layer of UV resin, then put the magnet into place, covered it up with more UV resin and cured it again. And so that was a really easy way of making a beach themed magnet to go on my picture board. Right then, it's time for the next piece of decoration. And if you saw my video last week, you will have seen me making resin lollipops or resin popsicles, you might know them as. And I adapted my mould in that video. So if you didn't see that, I will leave a link to it so you can see how I adapted it so that I could make angled lollipops, or not lollipops, ice lollies or popsicles to make like a melting effect ice lolly and all will become clear very soon but yeah the details of how I adapted the mould are in the other video 
So I'm actually going to be doing three lollies because I just wanted to try out a couple of different techniques. And what I really wanted was like a dark turquoise colour at the bottom and a lighter turquoise colour at the top, kind of like an ombre effect. So for my first one, I wanted to try making the dark turquoise and then filling it up with clear just to see what would happen to see if you would get a little bit of an ombre effect so that's why here you can see me pouring half of it into another cup so i had some clear and some turquoise I'm using Vitriol Turquoise Transparent Pigment from Resin Pro and I just added a little bit at a time until I got the colour I wanted. I half filled three of the cavities with that dark turquoise colour and on one of them I filled it up with the clear to get that effect as I mentioned before and the other two I just left them half filled and allowed them to cure and then came back to them when they were cured to do the next layer. Before leaving them to cure, I needed to get the lollipop sticks into position and this mould comes with a lid and the lid has holes in it for the lollipop sticks and it keeps them in place really nicely, which is just perfect for this job. So yeah, once the sticks were in place, I just needed to add the lid and then I could leave it secure. Right then the next day it was time to very carefully remove the lid and then we were ready for the next step. I mixed up some more resin and this time I just added a little bit of the turquoise pigment. I'm adding the tiniest bit of resin to each of the two cavities because I'm going to be adding some crushed glass and I find that if you add a little bit of resin first it's got st something to stick to when you pour it in rather than a you know, applying it to a dry surface and then you might get some pockets of air trapped in there and I didn't want that. So just the tiniest bit of resin to cover the surface of those half lollies, lollipops, <laughs> ice lollies. <laughs> and yeah, the crushed glass I've got is from Laura's Art Corner and I love it. I wanted to try one of each. I've got the Tinsel Town and... I can't see what the other one is from here on my screen. But yeah, it's the gold one. And I spooned it in onto the wet resin. And then once that was all in position, I just filled it up with the rest of the turquoise resin. And the next day it was ready to take them out of the moulds. I like to do it in some soapy water, try and get it down the side of the mould and it helps it to just slip out. It will need a little bit of pushing and pulling but once that water finds its way into the mould it does actually slip out a lot easier than I'm making it look at the moment. Trust me, it works. <laughs> Okay then, so the one I did all in one go really didn't work and I kind of knew it wouldn't but you know you have to try these things don't you. But the other two I was really really happy with them. I think they looked great. Now the thing with this mould is it's, it's not shiny, it's dull on the inside and so although the wet at the moment it, you know, when they're wet, you can see how lovely and vibrant those colours are. But once it dries, it's quite a matte finish. So what I did do was I sprayed them with some spray varnish once they dried and they looked a lot better. Right then, now it's time for the fun part, which is assembling it all. I've got some UV resin here and I'm adding some of the turquoise pigment, the same one as I used before. Just a little bit of the pigment because I haven't got much UV resin in that silicon pot. And then once it's mixed, it needs to be poured very carefully into a puddle shape onto the stand where the picture will be mounted. And... What you will need to do is have your um, UV lamp ready. <laughs> you need to be able to access it very quickly and hold it in place because you don't want the resin to start going where you don't want it to go and it will start moving once you've got that puddle there. So yeah, be ready to act quickly. So I'm just checking the position where I want my ice lolly before pouring the puddle and yeah. It's self-explanatory. You can see what's happening. The only thing is I didn't have time because, you know, it, 
it's quite a speedy thing to do. I didn't have time to get rid of the air bubbles. But other than that, it worked really well. Because as you can see, it's going really near the slot there. And I didn't want it to go down the slot. So I really had to start acting quickly. And so I put the ice lolly into place. And then very quickly took my UV lamp and started to cure it. And what you don't see, because it happened just as I put my UV lamp into place, is it started to run down the front, which was perfect. I got a little drip. And because the UV resin starts dry, um, curing instantly, it, that drip didn't stop to keep moving. It stopped and it just looks really natural. And then anyway, I cured it from all different directions and that's how it looked when it was cured. And here I am just applying the photograph with the magnet that I made. It's actually a different shell magnet that I made because I put the magnet in the wrong way up before. And some shells just to make it all come together nicely. And we have the finished result. And I think it looks really good. I love how the turquoise lolly complements the turquoise in the photographs. In fact, even the clothes that I'm wearing in the photograph complement everything as well. The whole colour scheme all goes together so well. Yeah, I'm really pleased with it. What do you think? Do you like it? Are you going to make one? I hope so. And of course, that photograph can be changed for a different beach-themed photograph. You know, it doesn't have to be the same one. That's the beauty of it being magnetic. You can change it all around if you want to. So we've reached the end of the video and I hope you've enjoyed it. As always, I would like to ask you to subscribe if you haven't already done so and to give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video and I will see you again next week. Thank you for watching and bye for now.